الدارة حتى يسر الله لإخواننا المجاهدين في الدولة الإسلامية إقامة مواة الخلافة في أرض الشام The leader of the Islamic State militant group that controls parts of Syria and Iraq has accepted a pledge of allegiance from Nigerian Islamists Boko Haram. While referring to Islamic State leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, ISIS spokesman Abu Muhammad al-Adnani said, Our Caliph, God save him, has accepted the pledge of loyalty of our brothers of Boko Haram. So we congratulate Muslims and our jihadi brothers in West Africa. Uh, we just heard uh, segments of an audio clip, uh, the recording of an ISIS leader accepting and welcoming Nigeria's terrorist group Boko Haram, uh, pledging allegiance to ISIS. Uh, reported and released by various outlets, including Reuters yesterday. And as we continue on America's Forum, we have to ask this alliance, what will it mean in the fight against ISIS? They've gained 20,000 square miles. They have over 6,000 fighters uh, in the area that's held by Boko Haram in Africa. For more on this story, we are very pleased to be joined by terrorism and extremism experts. They study it. They're not terrorists or extremists. I want to get this straight. Jessica Stern is at Newsmax, New York. J.M. Berger is in Cambridge, Massachusetts. They are the co-authors of the new book, ISIS, The State of Terror. We're also rejoined uh, by Liz Peake from Newsmax, New York. And we want to get to, the book in, to your book in just a minute. But, Jessica, let me begin with you. This formal acknowledgement of the alliance between Boko Haram and ISIS, what does it mean? Well, I think we're going to see groups joining ISIS and perhaps even breaking away from ISIS. I think we're going to see an evolution of ISIS's alliances over time. ISIS comes out of al-Qaeda in Iraq. It's a group that kept changing names, merged, broke up. This is a typical uh, evolution of a terrorist group. I guess the follow-up question would be, what does it do for Boko Haram? Are they going to be receiving money, armaments, people? What, what does it do for them? And, uh, and also, are there other large organizations? Are, in my view, Boko Haram is pretty significant. Am I wrong? Are, are there other big groups out there that could tie themselves to ISIS? There are other groups that could tie themselves to ISIS, but Boko Haram is a very significant addition. Uh, it is a very big deal. I, I agree. It is a very big deal. Uh, JM, let me turn to you and, and get your perspective on this as you Skype in from Cambridge, Massachusetts. You know, the world literally has become a smaller place with uh, jet planes and jet travel and all of that. We think about uh, Islam and uh, separatist movements in the Philippines and elsewhere. Uh, Jessica was mentioning perhaps future alliances with this modern caliphate. Where might they look next geopolitically? Well, they've been reaching out in a lot of different directions. They do have uh, significant support in Southeast Asia, in the Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia. Some of those groups have pledged to ISIS, but ISIS hasn't officially accepted them yet because they don't have a developed command and control structure. So we could see some growth there. Also, uh, the Pakistani Taliban has been significantly split over the question of ISIS. And some, some factions there have already pledged to ISIS, and we could see more on that end. Mindful of that. Again, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Liz. No, I just, I'm just curious what these organizations hope to gain by this alliance. Are they empowered by it in terms of military capabilities, or what? What other than the obvious public relations effort? What, what does it do for them? Well, we've definitely seen that uh, ISIS has dangled money in front of groups to try and get them to sign up. You know, their their financial strength is under some pressure right now, so how much money and, and what form that takes is going to be a little unclear. But even under pressure, ISIS is, is probably the best financed terrorist organization ever. So, you know, they really have that to offer. And they also have media capabilities, and we've seen this with Boko Haram already, even before the official announcement. ISIS has upgraded their, their media output substantially over the last couple of weeks in advance of this announcement. Uh, Jessica, let's, let's turn to uh, the book that you and J.M. co-authored. Tell us the reasoning behind the book, what you hope to achieve in writing it. Well, one of the things we hope to achieve is to explain what went wrong in Iraq, the rise of ISIS, and how important it is to help Iraq 
uh, avoid sectarian policies that make Sunnis feel so much under threat. It's such a great uh, opportunity for ISIS to recruit when Sunnis are feeling under threat. And we also wanted to explicate the social media uh, successes of ISIS, and that's why I, I wanted to work with J.M. Berger, because he's a world-renowned expert on terrorist groups' use of social media. It seems as though social media, the, the, the um, output from ISIS is enormous. From my research, it looks like we are countering it very poorly. Is there any, uh, do you detect in our State Department or in the government any really ramped up effort to get our message out there, the pro-America, pro-capitalist, whatever message that might, pro-democracy message that might tame this group's uh, reach? Well, they're just I, Yes, I think true. the State Department. Go ahead. Go ahead, J.M. <laughs> uh, there's definitely counter-messaging going on. Uh, you know, w exactly what the nature of it is right now, it's kind of fractured and diverse, and that reflects our fractured and diverse culture. So, you know, ISIS, has, although it's a substantial operation, it's, it's actually, it's huge for an extremist organization. It's very small compared to almost any other kind of interest group in the world. Uh, but it has a unified message, and, and we have many messages that we want to project to sort of counter that. So, you know, there's a problem of sort of coordinating what we do and also a, a problem of commitment. I mean, ISIS supporters will do nothing but eat, drink, and tweet. And, uh, you know, as opposed to us, we have lives. We, we go to movies sometimes or go out to dinner or donate to charity, and, you know, we have other interests. So... Their, their advantage is their single-mindedness in this, and that's going to be a hard one to tackle. Jessica, about 40 seconds for this answer. We constantly hear that almost any American response becomes, quote, a, a tool to, to recruit more to the ranks of ISIS. Uh, if we took a very aggressive approach with them, would it be, quote, a tool to recruit, or should we take everything uh, that we have to eliminate this threat right now? Well, I, I agree with King Abdullah of Jordan that the presence of Western ground forces could, in fact, be counterproductive. So it's very hard to know precisely how to respond, given that. Luckily, uh, I think Jordan and other countries are really uh, getting more involved. That's so important. The name of the book, written by Jessica Stern and J.M. Berger, is entitled ISIS, The State of Terror. To both Jessica and J.M., our thanks. When we come back, more with Liz. She'll be joined by Ellis Hennigan. Stay tuned.